CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. We have some breaking news for you right now off the top. Broward County Public Schools has a new superintendent. After rounds of interviews and a 7 to 2 vote by the school board, Dr. Peter Lakata has secured the role as the county superintendent. We're going to have much more on the story tonight on CBS News Miami at 5. Former President Donald Trump and the legal trouble he faces are taking a lot of oxygen away from the 2024 campaign. The Republican field for the nomination continues to grow. CBS News Miami's Natalie Brand has more details from Washington, D.C. Are you ready? Are you ready? Former President Trump's campaign says it has raised more than $7 million in the face of a historic indictment. That includes more than $2 million brought in from a Bedminster, New Jersey fundraiser the day he was arraigned. This is called election interference and yet another attempt to rig and steal a presidential election. But they will fail and we will win bigger and better than ever before. Trump's legal battles continue to dominate the race for the Republican presidential nomination. If my candidacy is going to be about responding to, the, you know, things that former President Trump did, then there's not going to be much of a candidacy. By the way, not for me him, and not though. for any other Republican nominees. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez dodged interview questions about Trump after officially launching his White House bid. I'm going to run for president. With a video on Twitter Thursday morning. Out on the campaign trail, the Republican hopefuls are facing new questions about whether they'd pardon Trump if elected president. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley pledged to pardon Trump, saying it would be bad for the country to see him in jail. Trump's former vice president wouldn't say one way or the other. There are serious charges in this indictment. Now, the president's entitled to make his defense. I look forward to hearing what defense he might have, but I, uh, I can't defend what is alleged. While most GOP candidates are treading lightly, Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie have been the most vocal critics. Natalie Brand. And CBS News, Washington. CBS News Miami will stream Mayor Suarez's announcement when it happens tonight in Los Angeles. You can watch it live on CBSMiami.com and Pluto apps at 9 p.m. Just two days after the indictment of former President Donald Trump, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis weighed in on the pending litigation. He also challenged California Governor Gavin Newsom to run against President Biden in the 2024 presidential race. Take a listen. You abuse your power there. You've abused your power in these other things, and yet they don't seem to ever be held accountable. Well, I can tell you, um, uh, when there's a new sheriff in town on January 20th, 2025, accountability is going to be the order of the day. So buckle your seatbelts. Are you going to throw your hat in the ring and challenge uh, Joe? Are you going to get in and do it? Or are you just going to sit on the sidelines and chirp? So why don't you throw your hat in the ring and then we'll go ahead and, and talk about what, what's happening. Governor DeSantis, just one of many Republican candidates in the race to take over the Oval Office. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look at beautiful downtown Miami, we are tracking heat, humidity, and the timing of more showers moving through our area. Next Weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler joins us with details on it all. Kind of hazy out there today, and yes. that's, yeah, because we've got the heat, we've got the humidity, and of course, a heat advisory that's going to continue until 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. It includes the entire area, including the Florida Keys, so you want to really take it easy right now. Don't go jogging at the peak uh, heat times of the day. Drink lots of water and just stay inside by the air conditioning if you can. Right now, the temperature, air temperature is 92 degrees in Miami, but now add the humidity, and there is some low-level moisture in the atmosphere today. So it feels like 102 degrees, 102 in Homestead, Fort Lauderdale, around 103. There's a little bit of dry air in the mid-levels, so not quite as high as far as our relative humidity, and therefore we don't have as much moisture to work with today. So at this point, there are no showers or storms showing up just yet. The possibility does exist that we could see some. This is one of our models. It's pointing some showers toward the Palm Beach area later on this afternoon into this evening. They might want to dive south to the southeast might clip northern Broward County. Other than that, looks like most areas stay dry until tomorrow. 
things are going to start changing. More moisture beginning to move in that ridge of high pressure backing up to the west. That's going to allow moisture to slide in with that south southwesterly flow. So by tomorrow afternoon, we are going to see likely some showers and thunderstorms popping up, making their way from west to east. And boy, does that chance for rain kick up by the weekend. We're going to see numerous showers and storms Saturday. Look at this model depiction here. Now this could be overdone, but we are going to put a high chance for rain coming in Saturday and Sunday, both days. I know this is Father's Day. You might want to have alternative plans to do something inside if in fact we do get that much rain. Now through Sunday, this are our modelings. Our models are saying about well, one to two, maybe three inches of rain. And again, it really depends on the speed of these storms. If they clip along, you don't get as much rain. If they sit, then you can pick up several inches in a very short period of time. Tomorrow's high expected to be 95 degrees. That would set a new record for Miami. Temperatures will stay in the 90s. The humidity will climb. So yes, indeed, this is record territory. And we've got something out in the tropics that we're going to be watching. Just a 20% chance, but there's an awful lot of Saharan dust that it has to deal with. We'll see how far that goes. Temperatures will stay very warm. Chance for rain kicks in starting Saturday all the way through next week. All right, thank you, Cindy. When we come back, the latest on the controversy surrounding the Surfside building collapse and what may take the place of the Champlain Towers. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's Quick Cast. Right now, one person is dead and several others were rushed to the hospital after a wreck on I-95. CBS News Miami's Jacqueline Quinn is outside the hospital in Miami with the latest. Miami Fire Rescue called this a mass casualty incident. Eight cars piled up in this crash, multiple people injured, and one person dead there on the scene. The initial accident happened just after 2 this morning near Northwest 62nd Street. Florida Highway Patrol says a black Tesla lost control as it was coming onto I-95 and hit a concrete barrier blocking the roadway. Following this, another car hit that Tesla, ejecting a person onto the road. A white Nissan trying to slow down to avoid running over this victim was then hit by another car, pushing that car forward and over that victim. Then a series of lesser accidents happened later. Again, we know one person has died. Nine people were injured, four of them taken here to Jackson Memorial Hospital and one person taken to Ryder Trauma Center in serious condition. Now, some were able to leave that scene without treatment. While we were here, we were able to talk with a woman who came here to check in on her friend. All I know is my friend called me. She said somebody hit her from the back. When they hit her from the back, when they hit her from the back, they flew out the window. So I don't know. I'm just here to sure. make sure she's okay. She said the rest of squad people told her to come here to the hospital to make sure she's okay. So. Now, those lanes are opened back up at this time, but FHP is still investigating. In Miami, I'm Jacqueline Quinn, CBS News, Miami. It has been almost two years since the Surfside building collapse. This afternoon, we are getting a look at the design plans that have been submitted for what soon may be built in its place. Developers Domac International and Zaha Hadid Architects sent its application to the town of Surfside earlier this week. It included a pair of designs for a 12 story condominium project. 98 people were killed when the Champlain Towers collapsed in June 24th of 2021. Domac International was the only bidder during an auction for the property last July. On the money watch, for the first time in 15 months, the Federal Reserve is putting a pause on interest rate hikes, believing that inflation might be leveling off. Inflation, as you know, soared last year, climbing to 9%. The Feds wanted to slow down the demand in the market, so they raised rates and got inflation numbers down to 4%. Officials say the goal is to get it to 2%. Miami Proud is presented by FPL. Learn more about Florida's energy future at fpl.com slash value. For many students, going to college seems far-fetched because they simply can't afford it. But one South Plantation High School graduate didn't let that stop her from fulfilling her late mother's wish. CBS News Miami's Maribel Rodriguez shares her story. It's an unusual thing for my family to have somebody go to college, but when I was little, 
they kind of picked me because they saw that I could like read pretty well. So they were like, this one, this one's going to college. And she is. Emily Lowe, a new graduate of South Plantation High School, is making her family proud and all those who know her. She's a student kind of like no other. Emily is just one of three students in the state of Florida and 100 nationwide to be awarded the Horatio Alger National Scholarship. It's part of a program that awards students who show great determination, integrity, and perseverance in overcoming great obstacles in their young lives. My adversity started when I was in the fifth grade. I was 10 years old. My mother was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma and she passed away six months later and I then moved in full time with my father who um, he is disabled so he can only work part time. My mom was like she was the glue of our family. She was the type of person that you would show up to an event just because she was going to that event. So uh, she was there to plan every holiday, every birthday. Like she made you feel special. And without her, I feel like our family kind of lost that spark. So it was hard for all of us. Emily channeled her pain and heartbreak into her schoolwork and being the best that she can be while keeping the promise she made to the woman she loved the most. And she just instilled this necessi necessity for education in me. Um, and I promised her when she was in hospice that I would continue that, that I wouldn't forget her, that I wouldn't forget her educational values and that I would go to college. And that promise is being kept. Emily will be attending Colorado College, then hopefully Columbia University, where she hopes to make another dream come true in memory of her mother. I felt that biomedical engineering was a perfect mesh between the research that I love to do, my passion for science, and also a fulfillment to hopefully help some 10-year-old little girl not lose her mom in the future. As long as she sticks on what she's doing, she's going to change the world. Maribel Rodriguez, CBS News, Miami. Emily is amazing, and I can't wait to watch her continue to soar. That's your quick cast. I'm Nasha Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami.